We're covering the origin, insertion, and actions of muscles. Origin, insertion, and action. Hi, I'm Brad. I've been teaching anatomy for about 24 years now, trying to make it simple for people. I also have a study guide here for muscular system. Click on the link below if it helps you. What I want to start with before we continue on with identifying other muscles is trying to figure out how do you learn the origin, insertion, and action. Let's start with just the definition. The origin and insertion is the point of attachments for the muscle. The origin is the point of less movement relative to the insertion is the attachment point for more movement. In other words, as we pull a muscle, it tends to shorten to give me that leverage or force. So one of my examples is the biceps brachii. So when I flex my biceps brachii, I have one area that's going to move more than the other. And that attachment point is called the insertion. Where people struggle with learning this, it's a lot of information that typically you got to learn in a short period of time and you're trying to memorize it and it's better to learn it for the exam. The best thing you can do is to teach it to other people as if you're presenting in class. But in the meantime, in preparation for that, what I recommend doing is first organizing the muscles into different areas. And for example, so the posterior side of the arm, the anterior side of the arm, the adductor side, the flexor side, the extensor side of different areas. Try to group them in, in areas of three to four because sometimes you'll see the origin insertions are either matching or relatively similar. And then when we cover the actions, the actions are a result of the attachment points. The action is what type of movement it does. And remember, we can organize actions into three types the prime mover or the agonist, the antagonist, which does the opposite movement, and then the helpers of the agonist that we call synergists. So we're describing the agonist or the prime movement that the muscle does relative to what the body is positioned based on the attachments. Why I show this slide is the other way to learn muscles is to try to break them down by their attachment points. In other words, search pictures and find muscles to where they're isolated to where you can see the attachment points. Because one of the challenges with OIAs is you tend to see more of the superficial muscles and we're not taking away them to see deeper to understand how they attach. So these are examples of trying to show you as we learn the attachments of them. So I'll start with the biceps brachii on the anterior side. And remember, we call it the biceps because it has two heads along the arm. So biceps brachii. So remembering that's along the arm. So I have a two attachment points since it has two heads. It has a long head and a short head. The long head is on the lateral side L for L, long for lateral. So the lateral head is the long head. On the medial side is the short head. So as we describe these, they're both coming up to talk to the scapula. And where they connect to start with is the short head is going to go all the way up to the coracoid process of the scapula. So short head is going to originate or its origin is on the coracoid process of the scapula. Versus when I look at the long head, the long head comes all the way up and wraps around the supraglenoid tubercle and comes up over the top. So supraglenoid tubercle is the origin for the long head. So you have two origins because you have two heads. But they come down together, and what I don't see here is they'll come down to the distal side and attach to the radial tuberosity of the radius. So the insertion is the radial tuberosity and that helps me to create the action of flexion of the elbow. It also helps with supination. Remember I said you show you a couple soup. So supination and then flexion of the elbow is its action based on its attachment point because our insertion is at the radial tuberosity. When we look at trapezius, trapezius is supposed to look like a trapezoid, the shape of a trapezoid. I don't see that, but if you do, trapezoid. And so when we look at its attachment points, you can see it's coming up to the occipital bone. And where it's attaching is right at that superior nuchal line. And we looked at the external occipital protuberance, and we have that ligamentum nuchae. So you have the attachment point. The origin is occurring at the occipital bone. But then it comes all the way down and continues along the spinous processes of the thoracic vertebrae. So the origin is this whole wide section. And when it's very wide, that tends to be the origin, a point of less movement. 
So the origin runs all the way down the middle from the occipital bone down through the spinous processes of the thoracic vertebrae. Where it inserts is as it comes up to the scapula. So it as it inserts and comes up the scapula, specifically at the clavicle and the scapula. Where is it doing that? At the acromion and then the scapular spine. So as I come up here, I know this is my insertion just based on its movement because I can use it to create an elevation. I can depress the scapula. I can retract it. I can do all these movements. I can shrug my shoulders there. I don't know. So I have all this movement relative to the scapula because that's where it's inserting, the point of more movement. When I move on to something like the gastrocnemius, our calf muscle, we look at how it attaches with two heads as well. There's a medial and lateral head. And these two heads come up and they come up to the top of the femur, specifically the condyles of the femur. So I have these two pieces that will wrap up over the top of my condyles of the femur. That's its origin. It'll come down and insert at the calcaneal tendon to the calcaneus. And we know this as the Achilles heel. So when someone says they tore their Achilles, that's at that point, but that's the point where we have insertion. And I know when I flex my gastrocnemius, I have more movement on the distal side. So when I do something like plantar flexion, which is stepping up on my tiptoes, you feel that flexing or shortening of an angle of the gastrocnemius. So the origin occurs at the top or the proximal side at the condyles of the femur, and it inserts down at the calcaneal tendon. When I looked at rectus femoris, rectus femoris is one of our quadriceps. So when I come and I look at the point of attachment, where it's originating is at one of our spines. Remember when we covered the ilium, we said there was these two spines and the bottom one is the anterior inferior iliac spine. So it originates at the anterior inferior iliac spine and also part of the acutabulum where the femur connects to the ilium. So it originates here and where it comes down and inserts is at the tendon. So it's coming down to the tibial tuberosity by way of the quadriceps tendon because all of my quads come together at one point on the distal side of the quadriceps tendon. As a result, I can use that to extend my knee and then I can also use it to flex my hip. So what I'm showing you here is we learn origin, insertion, and action. Try to group them in different areas. I'm not a fan of mnemonics unless they make sense for that particular area of the body that you're looking at. I try to avoid learning something in addition to what you're already learning unless it's helping you to learn an anatomical structure. So when I look at this, I try to group things in threes or fours of different areas. If that doesn't help, try to find the individual muscles on the internet to where you can look at something like this and visualize the attachment points. The last part as you start to understand this, teach it to other people. The best way to learn a language like anatomy is to teach it to somebody else. It'll save you time, you'll learn it faster. These are OIAs.